basketball, to many, is just a sport. To the Legler family, it's a legacy. Huh? <laughs> when did you start playing basketball? Um, when I was five. Five? What yeah. got you into it? Why? Why'd you pick basketball? They made me play, honestly. They made you play? I did you want to play? I absolutely hated it at first. <laughs> they put me in this preschool league and I hated it. I would throw a tantrum when they put me in the game. He was my coach. Mm -hmm. I would freak out and then I just ended up liking it. But I hated it at first. Really? D yeah. Did you play any other sports? Um, I did soccer, softball, swim, and that's it. So, so you didn't want you didn't even want to play basketball. Mm -mm. Which no. what did you want to play? Did you even want to play um, sports or no? I liked soccer the most. Soccer, but I wasn't very good at it. No. <laughs> Newman University's women's basketball player Lauren Legler is the daughter of former NBA player Tim Legler. Did your coach all throughout your entire life, or no? It was more my mom. Point? It was more your mom. Yeah, he. He was always there, but because of ESPN, he couldn't be there all the time. So my mom did it full time, and then when I was a junior in high school, he was my full time coach. Mullen on Weber. Tim Legler played for six NBA teams, and he shared a story about his playing days. How was it playing in the NBA? Because you played, obviously, you played when you're obviously a little kid, and then middle school, high school, college. The game, how completely different is it? Yeah, else? it's it's definitely a different level. I think you know it really became um, obvious to me very first training camp I ever played in, mm -hmm. first preseason game I ever played in at the NBA level. Um, we're playing at Chicago Bulls. Scottie Pippen was and Michael Jordan were on that team, and I remember coming off a down screen like I had done a thousand times in my life, and you know, I was pretty good at knowing uh -huh. I had separation in space, and I could come off, shoot my normal little 20-footer off a down screen, and I caught the ball. I knew that I had lost Pippen on a switch. He was probably 10 feet trailing me. Came off, caught the ball, turned, pivoted, went to shoot, and then it just was like an eclipse, like an arm just came, and I just couldn't <laughs> see anything. And I literally threw the ball like out of bounds before I landed, like trying to make a pass because it was just no space, no time. And I think to me, that was the biggest adjustment. And that's when I really knew like what level these guys were at yeah. was how much less time you have to make things happen and make a decision. Although Tim played professionally, <laughs> Lauren doesn't want to follow his footsteps. Instead, she wants to be a teacher. Obviously he played professionally. Do you mm -hmm. have do you want to play professionally? No. Not at all? <laughs> no. no I, 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 I was going to ask you that. I knew I was going to ask you that question before it started, but when you said you didn't want to play basketball, when you started as a kid, oh, yeah. I figured there's no way. Dan, do you have siblings? Yeah. Or I have family? a younger brother. Younger brother? Mm -hmm. Does he play too? Mm -hmm. He's a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. Are they as hard on him as. Uh, my dad's as harder they? on him. He's harder on him. Yeah. Father and my Sunday. mom like is totally uh -huh. blind to every mistake he makes. <laughs> but. <laughs> For Tim. It's all about being a dad and a mentor to Lauren about life and basketball. So what advice do you give to Lauren? And um, first and foremost, make sure you're, you're playing for the right reasons. Right. And that is that it's first and foremost, you love the competition and, and it's fun. And if that ever starts to not be there, then you need to start to wonder, is this something that I should be doing? Because you know, there's a lot of things that you can do with your time and be passionate about and you should be doing that on a daily basis if you find yourself feeling that way about basketball then you shouldn't be doing it that was the main piece of advice I always gave them and then the other thing I always have told them is you don't have expectations you don't have the right to have expectations for success if you haven't put the time in Tim ranks fourth all time on the NBA's career three point percentage list at 43% and in 1996, he won the NBA three-point shootout. I don't know if he can put up a score of 20. I think that might be good enough. Big shot. He's got it. So, you know, the last name of Legler. Mm -hmm. Obviously, playing basketball is tough to live up to because yeah. he was such a great, great shooter, one of the top percentages mm -hmm. um, in NBA history. Do you feel any like when you're playing? Do you feel any pressure, like added pressure? Um, while you play? Kind of. Not from my parents at all, but I just feel like when people come and they see, mm -hmm. like, on the, you know, like, the roster, Legler, I feel like they expect me yeah. to shoot well or perform well, and I feel like if I don't, then I'm kind of, like, I don't know, letting 
the name down, I guess, yeah, yeah. in a way. I, I know what you're, um, what you're saying. Yeah. I just remember in my freshman year of high school, we went to a game, and the crowd brought a huge blow-up fat head of my dad, and it was in the stands, and every time I caught the ball, they would freak out and, like, start yelling things at me, and it was... This is the other team? Yeah. The, the other it was section? terrible. Wow. Yeah, so I don't know. I just feel like I kind of have, like, the spotlight on yeah. me sometimes. Mm-hmm. Do you like it, or do you not, do you not um, like the pressure? When I play well, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody does, of course. Yeah. Um, so overall, I'd say no. <clears throat> no? Mm-mm. Tim also dealt with pressure. Towards the end of his career, he started a family and suffered a knee injury that forced him to stop playing the game that he loved. So let's go right to towards the end of your career playing. So when did you, were you playing and you started a family while you were playing? Yes. Or you, did, you did? Yep. How, how many seasons were you playing when you had a family? Uh, Lauren was born in 96. Ryan was born in 99. I mm-hmm. retired in 2000. 2000. So they were little. I don't even know if Lauren remembers even going to the games when I was still playing in the yeah. NBA. Uh, she was so little. But, yeah, I started the family. And I actually, unfortunately for me, I didn't get to kind of leave the game on my own terms. I had a very, very, very severe knee injury. I tore three ligaments mm-hmm. in my knee. Um, had five more surgeries after that over the next three years, cleaning it up and scopes and all that's the issues with cartilage and you name it. So I tore it at 29. I retired at 33, and I probably had another five years to give to the game, but I just physically, just do it, yeah. physically. physically couldn't do it. I just, I just didn't have the same ability to separate from defenders. I was, you know, the technology's changed a lot. Oh, yeah. The operation is significantly yeah. less invasive now. The braces you wear are better, lighter. I was wearing a big, bulky, heavy mm-hmm. knee brace, trying to play in the NBA. Surgery wasn't as good, dealing with a lot of that stuff. It just wasn't. I wasn't able to play close to the same level that I had reached at my peak. And it just wore on me mentally and physically. And I, and I had prepared myself for what was next. The next step in Tim's life was caring for his family. Aside from his daughter, Lauren, he has a son, Ryan. You retired, and then did you go right to ESPN? Not immediately. I actually coached one year of high school rules basketball. Uh So you took a year off. did, and I I still had some uh, income coming from the NBA. So it kind of bought me time. Like, what was the bridge time? Mm -hmm. What was I going to do? I went and coached a year of high school girls basketball. At the same time, I was going back to get my master's degree. So I went to Wharton School of Business, University of Pennsylvania. I got my master's degree from there. My whole goal was to meet people there and get into the white collar world, maybe yeah. start a company, things like that. That's you know what I wanted to do. But ESPN approached me during my time at Wharton and I went up and did an audition, loved it. The schedule was great. Um, I knew I was gonna be able to spend a lot of time with the kids as they grew up. So it kind of pushed me in that position, not knowing if I was gonna like it or not. And here I am 15 years later. <laughs> Love it. It's worked Still out doing pretty it. well. <laughs> yeah, it's worked it, yeah. out pretty well. Tim started at ESPN in the year 2000. 15 years later, he's still there as an NBA analyst. But the lifestyle can be difficult. Going back and forth, how many times, is it weekly you just go up and Pretty back, much back every single week during the NBA season. Really? So for about nine months yeah. straight, I go up there every single week. And uh, they've been incredible to me by catering my schedule toward the first half of the week to give me time because they know how passionate I am about yeah. coaching AAU. Mm-hmm. I've been doing that for this will be my eighth year at AAU coaching, which starts in March, goes all the way to the end of July. But you have to have your weekends free, and I have to have at least one night of practice that I can be there. Right. My assistant can run the other night. So Thursday through Sunday, typically, uh, I'm not working at ESPN. They give me that time. So I'm usually like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's pretty regular like clockwork, but it's basically every single week during the yeah. NBA season. Is that is that tough? You know, it's, yeah, it's really home. tough. Tough. Really, really tough. Yeah. yeah. You know, the toughest part about it, honestly, is is missing days you know there's things I'm going to miss with the kids Mm -hmm. you know their games and just being there for them but I kill myself to make up for that with the other time that I do get and honestly the person that probably pays the biggest price is my is my current wife who's their Mm stepmom um who you know I go to work and then I come home then I rush down to the shore I'm going to games I'm at Newman seeing a (laughs) game and then I'm coaching in the spring and summer so my life is tied around as much time as I can spend with Lauren and Ryan Mm -hmm. that's really what I've dedicated my life to you know since the day they were born um, so, but it's hard when you when you're out of town and you know you miss some things. He's going back and forth. Obviously, mm-hmm. is that is that difficult sometimes? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. 
It's yeah. definitely hard. He's not, he can't be at everything. Like I feel like normal dads can be at, and that's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The pressure of the last name, and with her dad being away from home, Lauren still plays the game her family lives by, and she puts it all out on the floor every game night. Who do you think, from a basketball perspective, has had a bigger impact? Because you said your mom's been your really coach. Oh yeah. Um, so who do you think? Probably my dad. Yeah. Because, I don't know, my mom is like, is really hard on me, so I feel like, she, even when I play well, she still tells me yeah. like, well you didn't do this good, and whatever. But, um, yeah, i definitely say my dad. My dad's the one who took me to the gym for hours and shot with me, and he's He's definitely been the biggest influence on my life, basketball-wise and life-wise, anything. Yeah. They eventually sat down together and talked about each other's game. When you guys, like, play, do you see each other's game in each other? Like, do you see your game in her? Certain aspects of it I do, for sure. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, obviously the way she shoots the ball. I mean, that's something that I tried to hone with her. It took me a long time to get her to get the kind of mechanics I was hoping for. Probably about 12, 13, it finally kicked in. So the way she shoots the ball and her release and form, yes, but not necessarily her, her mentality about trying to go find shots and hunt down shots. I was a little bit more aggressive with that. Yeah, I've definitely always struggled with my confidence, and he definitely doesn't <laughs> with anything. So <laughs> They will even watch tape together. She'll sit down now and watch a Newman game with me yeah. and go over some of the things. Um, I don't know necessarily that she sees what I'm seeing, even on the tape. <laughs> You're and when I point it out, she might still still disagree with me and yeah. like what it looked like to her on the court at the time. <laughs> she, she, needs, she needs some help. And of course, play a little one-on-one. -on -one. Oh. She never got that left hand. So you guys are playing one-on-one -on -one down there. How many times have you played one-on-one? -on -one? How many times? A lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot, yeah. Who wins? Him. All the time. I mean, he's 6'5", <laughs> It's okay. I've let her win to keep her playing. Why don't you do something besides shoot a three-pointer? But beyond <laughs> basketball, the two's relationship is what every father and daughter right. wants to have. Lauren, are you proud of your dad? Yes. Tim, are you proud of Lauren? I could not be any more proud. I'm the most proud father that you're ever going to see. <laughs> all I get is a yes. You can't expand on your answer. It's all I get. Yeah, I guess. I, was, I don't know. I was put on the spot. I don't know. Nah, honestly, yeah, I don't know. You, I, it's, it's probably hard. It's tough to find, I think, a dad and a daughter that are closer than we are. You know, mm -hmm. that that's, gives me the greatest. She's, she always tells her all the time, she's like the brightest light in my life, you know. So, yeah, that's part proud of, of her. <laughs>